Welcome. I welcome you all to this lecture in the course Samasa in Paninian Grammar. And this is the first course on Samasa. We begin our lecture with the recitation of the Mangala Charana. Vishvesham Satchidanandam Vandeham Yokhilan Jagat Charikarti Bari Bharti Sanjari Harti Leelaya Vishvesham Satchidanandam Vandeham Yokhilan Jagat Charikarti Bari Bharti Sanjari Harti Leelaya We are dealing with the Tatpurusha Samasa, which is one of the major compounds in Sanskrit. We have also said that the biggest basket of sutras is devoted in stating the Tatpurusha Samasa in the Paninian grammar. The structure of the Tatpurusha Samasa is shown in the form of an equation in this particular manner, where x and y are the two constituents which occur independently and they could be interrelated. When they are interrelated, they could be merged together, they could be integrated together and one output can be generated in the form of x, y. And in this y is highlighted primarily to show that y is the head of this particular unit x, y. But the main idea is that it is one undivided unit in the form of meaning as well as the word form as well as accent. We are right now studying the Vibhakti Tatpurusha which is the first classification under the Tatpurusha. In the previous lecture, we studied the Chaturthi Vibhakti Tatpurusha. Now, in this lecture, we study the Panchami Vibhakti Tatpurusha stated in the Sutras 2137 to 39. The Sutra 2137 is Panchami Bhayena. Panchami Bhayena. There are two words in the Sutra. One is Panchami and the second one is Bhayena. The word Panchami occurs in the Prathama Vibhakti. This is 1 slash 1. And so, the word in the Panchami Vibhakti is termed as Upasarjana because of the Sutra Prathama Nirdishtam Samasa Upasarjanam and because of the next sutra Upasarjanam Purvam the word Indo Panchami Vibhakti will be having Purvanipata that means that the word Indo Panchami Vibhakti will occupy the initial position in the compound. Then we have the word Bhayena which is instrumental singular 3 slash 1 with the word Bhaya. The words continued are sup from 212, subhamantrite parangavat svare, saha supa from the sutra saha supa 214. Obviously, samartha padavidhi from 211 is very much there. So, we have the structure of this particular compound stated by this particular sutra is the following. There is the purvapada having the Panchami Vibhakti at the end and the Uttarapada having the Pratipadika Bhaya and the Pratyaya Su. Now, 
द आउटपुट जनरेटेड इज द प्रातिपदिक इन द पूर्व पद एंड द प्रातिपदिक इन द उत्तर पद नेमली भय दिस विल बी द आउटपुट नाउ द फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन इज हाउ इज देयर द इंटर रिलेशन हाउ इज पंचमी रिलेटेड टू भय एंड द आंसर इज गिवन बाय द सूत्रज ऑफ पाणिनी namely 2328 which says that the panchami vibhakti denotes the karaka apadana panchami is prescribed by 2328 apadane panchami to denote apadana and what is an apadana is defined by the sutra bhitrarthanam bhaya hetuhu which is 1425 what this sutra means is that the hetu that is the cause of bhaya when the verbal roots bhi tra and its synonyms they are used is termed apadana and this apadana is expressed with the vibhakti called panchami and here we have the word bhaya which is derived from the verbal root bhi and now the sutra apadane panchami will add the vibhakti panchami after a pratipadika after which there is bhaya hetu that is to be denoted so this is how the semantic relatedness can be explained and once this is done the compounding process will begin and we have namely meaning fear from the thief that is chorad bhayam that is the laukika vigraha and this will be converted into the alaukika vigraha namely chora plus nasi plus bhaya plus su and now this becomes a samasa so this becomes a pratipadika and then the su and nasi these are the two sups which become part of the pratipadika and then supodhatu pratipadika yoho applies and deletes both the sups and so we have chora plus bhaya and the finally derived compound output would be chora bhaya chora bhayam is the laukika vigraha and chora bhaya is the compound output generated by the application of this particular sutra that we are studying right now panchami bhayena now there is a statement that is found in the later commentatorial literature which says bhaya bhita bhiti bhibhir iti vaktavyam so the sutra mentions only the word bhaya but the commentary says that along with bhaya there are some other words that also undergo the same process they also have fear as the core meaning conveyed by them and these words are bhita bhiti and bhi so instead of just saying bhaya na why not say bhaya bhita bhiti bhi bhi that would be far more appropriate and far more capturing the realistic data this is what is proposed so along with bhaya other words bhita bhiti and bhi bhiti and bhi means fear bhita means one who is afraid obviously because of fear so they also get compounded with the interrelated panchami vibhakti and thus this will generate forms like chora bhita chora bhiti and also chora bhi along with chora bhaya chora bhita is someone who is afraid of a thief chora bhiti means fear of thief and chora bhi also means fear from the thief let us now look at the next sutra apeta podha mukta patita patrastair alpashah apeta apodha mukta patita apatrastair alpashah 2138 This particular sutra 
has got two padas. Apeta, apodha, mukta, patita, apatras, taihi. This is three slash three, tritiya bahuvachana. And the second word is alpashaha. Alpashaha is an indeclinable, it means little. What this mention means is that in an option, the tradition interprets this as option. What it means is that the forms generated by this sutra are found only in a small domain, suggesting thereby that there is a big domain of usage which does not use this form and does not do this process which eventually indicates an optional usage. A small domain doing this process, making the compound and a big domain not doing this process. Obviously in some case there is this process happening and in some other case the process is not happening which eventually leads to the optional implication. Thus alpashaha is interpreted to mean an option or optionally. The words continued are sup and sahasupa. Samartha padavidhihi is obviously always there. The other word continued is panchami from the previous sutra and panchami occurs in the prathama vibhakti thereby it becomes the upasarjana by the sutra prathama nirdishtam samasa upasarjanam and by the sutra upasarjanam purvam the word appearing in the panchami vibhakti occupies the initial position of the compound purva nipata so the structure of the compound derived by this sutra would be something like this we have a pratipadika at the end of which there is panchami and there is another pratipadika where we have apeta apodha mukta patita apatrasta etc and followed by su and the output generated is the pratipadika in the first subanta along with apeta apodha mukta patita and apatrasta what is the semantic relation between the two subantas and that can be said to be the apadana which is stated by 2.3.28 apadane panchami which says that the panchami vibhakti expresses apadana and how apadana comes into the picture the apadana is defined by the sutra 1.4.24 as dhruvam apaye apadanam and in all these words apeta, apodha, mukta, patita and apatrasta which are the kradantas the verbal root denotes the motion and therefore there is scope for apadana and then this apadana gets expressed by panchami and that is how these subantas are interlinked with the subanta ending in the panchami vibhakti So there is Samarthya. Now let us look at the examples. The meaning is that one who has gone away from happiness, Sukhat Apetaha. The word Apeta is derived by the by adding the suffix the to the verbal root e with the preverb or the upasarga up upper e. Upper e means to go away. So Sukhat Apetaha. So the Alaukika Vigraha over here is Sukha plus Nasi. Nasi is the Panchami suffix plus Apeta plus Su. Now this becomes a Pratipadika. This becomes first a Samasa and then it becomes a Pratipadika. And then Nasi and Su are the parts of the Pratipadika. So Supodhatu Pratipadika Yoho applies and Nasi and Su, both of them get deleted. So we have Sukha plus Apeta and then we join them together, do the Sandhi, Parasavarna, do the Akasavarna Dirgaha Sandhi 
and we get the form Sukhapeta. Sukhapeta is the output generated of the Laukika Vigraha Sukhat Apeta, meaning one who has gone away from happiness. Similarly, one which is removed from imagination, Kalpanayaha Apodhaha. So here we have Kalpana plus Nasi and Apodha plus Su. So Kalpana is linked with the word Apodha through this Panchami suffix. Kalpana is the Apadana and it is expressed through the Panchami Vivakti. Now Kalpana plus Nasi and Apodha plus Su, this is the Alaukika Vigraha and so this gets the term Samasa over here and once it gets the term Samasa, it also is termed as Pratipadika and Nasi and Su are parts of this Pratipadika. So Supodhatu Pratipadika Yoho applies and we get Kalpana plus zero plus Apodha plus zero and then we join them together do the Savarna Dirgha Sandhi and we get the form Kalpana Podha which means the same thing as Kalpana Yaha Apodha something that is removed from imagination Kalpana Yaha Apodha Then we have freed from the cycle Chakrat Muktaha This is the Laukika Vigraha and here Chakra plays the role of an apadana with reference to the action of freeing, mucha, denotes this action. So chakra is the apadana and this apadana is explicitly expressed by the panchami vivakti suffix nasi over here. So the alaukika vigraha is chakra plus nasi plus mukta plus su. This becomes a samasa and so it becomes a pratipadika and then Nasi and Su, they get deleted because of the Sutra Supodhatu Pratipadika Yoho and so we have Chakra plus zero plus Mukta plus zero and so we have the finally derived output of the compound namely Chakra Mukta. Chakrat Muktaha, this is the Laukika Vigraha Chakra Mukta, this is the Alaukika Vigraha Chakra Mukta is the finally derived compound output which means the same thing as Chakrat Muktaha. We shall be also studying that there are some other words which when appear in Panchami, that Panchami Vibhakti does not get deleted. So there is a look like for example Stoka etc. And so we get the output Stokan Muktaha and so on. But this we shall study little later. Let us proceed further. The meaning is fallen from the heaven. Swargat Patitaha. This is the Laukika Vigraha. And the Alaukika Vigraha is Swarga plus Nasi and Patita plus Su. The verbal root Pata meaning means to go and obviously Swarga is the Apadanam intended by the speaker over here and so this Apadana gets expressed by the Panchami Vibhakti suffix Nasi and so we have Swargat Patitaha as the Laukika Vigraha. Swarga plus Nasi plus Patita plus Su, this is the Alaukika Vigraha and this becomes a Samasa, so it becomes a Pratipadika and then Supodhatu Pratipadika Yoho applies and deletes Su and Nasi which are part of the Pratipadika and so we have Swarga plus Patita, Swarga Patita as the finally derived output of the compound. Swarga Patita means the same as Swargat Patita, Swargat Patitaha, fallen from the heaven. We also note that the word patita also gets compounded with the word ending in dvitiya. Dvitiya shritatita patita. So 
Swargapatita can in fact be interpreted in two manners, either Swargampatitaha or Swargatpatitaha. Both ways it's possible. Finally, one who fled the waves, Tarangat Apatrastaha. Now, Taranga is the wave and Apatrasta denotes an action of which Taranga is intended to be an Apadana. And so, Panchami Vibhakti expresses this Apadana and this is how Taranga is semantically related with Apatrasta. And so there is compounding, and so we have Taranga plus Ngasi plus Apatrasta plus Su. This becomes a Samasa now, and Samasa becomes a Pratipadika. And once it is a Pratipadika, Ngasi and Su, these are the two Sups which are now part of the Pratipadika. So they get deleted by Supodhatu Pratipadika Yoho. So we have Taranga and Apatrasta. So we join them together, do the Savarna Dirgha Sandhi, and finally we get the output in the form of Taranga Apatrasta. So Tarangat Apatrastaha, this is the Laukika Vigraha, and we get the compound output Taranga Apatrasta, which also means the same thing, one who fled the waves. Now we have the next sutra, Stokantika Durartha Kritsrani Khtena, 2.139. So Stokantika Durartha Kritsrani Khtena has got two words. Stokantika Durartha Kritsrani, this is 1.3 and this indicates that this is the Upasarjana by the Sutra Prathama Nirdishtam Samasa Upasarjanam and obviously because of Upasarjanam Purvam there will be Purva Nipata. Khtena is also part of the Sutra which is 3.1 and it means with the suffix Khta. Words continued are Sup and Sahasupa. Samartha Padavidhi is obviously there. The other word continued is Panchami and this is also in 1-1. Now Panchami in this case is stated by 2-3-33 Karanecha Stokalpa Krachra Katipayasya Asattva Vachanasya in the sense of Karana as well. So the meaning of the Sutra is the following, the Panchamyanta Subanta, whose Pratipadika is either of the following, Stoka, Antika, Durartha and Krachra, is compounded with the interrelated Subanta, whose Pratipadika ends in the suffix Khta. I repeat, the Panchamyanta Subanta, whose Pratipadika is either of Stoka, Antika, Durartha and Krachra, is compounded with the interrelated Subanta, whose Pratipadika ends in the suffix Khta. So, the format would be of the following kind. Stoka, Antika, Durartha, Krachra as the Pratipadika plus Panchami, this is the first Subanta, followed by another Subanta which has Khta as a Krit suffix inside and followed by Su. And the output generated would be Stoka, Antika, Durartha and Krachra and of course the second Pratipadika ending in Khta. Here is an example. So, the meaning is, one was released only a while ago, Stokad Moktaha. This is the Laukika Vigraha. And so we have Stoka plus Nasi plus Mukta plus Su. This is the Alaukika Vigraha. And so the process of compounding starts here. So this becomes a Samasa and so this becomes a Pratipadika and now because it is a Pratipadika, Supodhatu Pratipadika Yoho will apply and delete Su as well as Nasi. But here 
panchamyaha stoka divya 632 applies and says that the panchami vibhakti after the word stoka etc is not deleted so supodhatu pratipadika johu in this case applies only in case of su after mukta and so nasi is retained so we have stoka plus nasi plus mukta plus zero and so we get the form stoka the mukta and by doing the sandhi yaro nunasike nunasiko va we get the form stokan mukta this is the finally derived output stoka the mukta is the laukika vigraha and stokan mukta is the finally derived compound output meaning the same thing one was released only a while ago now the next example is one who came from proximity antikadagataha this is the laukika vigraha and the alaukika vigraha is antika plus nasi plus agata plus su and this becomes a samasa so it becomes a pratipadika and then supodhatu pratipadika jo applies but a632 namely panchamya hastoka divya says that the panchami vibhakti after stoka etc is not deleted so supodhatu pratipadika jo applies only for su and so we get antikat agata and finally antikad agata as the finally derived compound output from antikad agata as the laukika vigraha one who came from proximity both of them convey this same meaning similarly durarth that is the word mentioned in the sutra and so we have durad agata one who came from afar and the similar meaning is expressed also by the words viprakrishta dagata so we have the same process dura dagata as the laukika vigraha dura plus nasi plus agata plus su as the alaukika vigraha and the term samasa applies here so it becomes a pratipadika and then supodhatu pratipadika yo applies but panchamya hastoka divya 632 says that the panchami vibhakti is not deleted after dur etc etc stoka etc and so we get the form dura dagata which is the finally derived compound output which means the same as dura dagata one who came from afar also we get the form viprakrishta dagata in the same sense undergoing the same process we also have the next example namely something obtained through hardship krachrat labdha this is the laukika vigraha and the alaukika vigraha is krachra plus nasi plus labdha plus su and so this becomes a samasa and so pratipadika so supodhatu pratipadika yo applies but panchamya hastoka divya says that the panchami vibhakti after the words stoka etc is not deleted and so we get the form krachrat labdha and then torli is the sutra that applies and converts this d into l and we get the form krachral labdha as the finally derived compound output meaning the same thing as krachrat labdha namely something obtained through hardship we have been mentioning about this sutra panchamya hastoka divya what it means is that in the environment of uttarapada which follows the panchami which comes immediately after the pratipadika's stoka etc is not deleted that is the meaning of this particular sutra so if we have stoka plus panchami plus uttarapada the panchami is not deleted which was otherwise stated by supodhatu pratipadika yoho so the output generated would be stoka plus panchami plus uttarapada to summarize the panchami vibhakti tat purusha is also accounted for by a very few sutras 
just as Chaturthi Tatpurusha was mentioned. The interrelation is through Apadana and Karana between the Subantas. There is also the case of non-deletion of Sup, that is Aluk stated by Panchamyaha Stokadibhyaha. These are the texts referred to and we shall study the Saptami Tatpurusha in the next lecture. Thank you for your patience.